and uh, I'm uh, Kim Mattila doing customer uh, support in CSC computing environment in, in clusters and, and, and cloud environment. And uh, I'm trying to give you an overview about all this stuff that you have heard today, uh, still going to hear from the customer point of view, kind of the researcher that comes to CSC, that what, what options they have and what is the idea why we are having these things. Because many of these things you have here have evolved from different bases and and they are still available for nearly any researcher from the universities who come to CSC and they can get them. So what is accessible to them for them and how they can use the, use the stuff. So first of all, uh, common features about uh, managing data at CSC. So uh, when, service, uh, when a researcher starts using CSC, typically these services are available only as long as, as they have an active project at CSC. So with services like EDA, it might be a little bit longer, but in many cases, it's just that, okay, you will have this service available as long as you have your project available at CSC. And when the project ends, then it's kind of a open area a little bit that what happens, we are not guaranteed to preserve any data. Uh, typically, the idea is that, okay, then we can kind of clean out the data once the project ends. Uh, in many cases, like in the HPC computing environment, it's the user who is considered to be owner of the data. So the directories in the HPC environment in Titan and Sisu are normally seen only by the user himself, not the project members even. So it's a personal data that follows the person also when he or she moves from one university to another or walk from one project to another. And then on the other hand, in CPOTA and, and IDA, uh, the project, computing project is the owner of the data. So everybody in the project can see the same data sets and the project manager, the PI of the project is kind of the main owner of the data set. So when copying data between these things, these two things, you kind of change also a little bit the ownership when you're using. One common feature which is quick, frequently asked is that no, we don't have any backup, no undo option. The, with the backup, we mean that, um, what, that technically our systems are quite uh, uh, good. For example, in object storage or in EDA, we have a multiple copies of the file, but when the user writes over existing data or removes files, in most, I, I think we don't have any services where you would now ask, please bring us, bring me the version that was in the repository two weeks ago because there was the data and I now realize that I've overwritten it. No, it's gone. And in the, especially in the computing environment, if you type RM or overwrite some file, it's gone, we don't, you don't get it back. So that's something which is often uh, kind of a, find out in a very kind of irritative way to our customers. They only realized when, when they have done it that, oh, this cannot be done any, oh, I can't, I don't have the data anymore. Uh, so there's no kind of automatic data management. We have many components here available, but uh, there's no single pipeline that would have been built in CSE so that the data would automatically go there. You, the customers of projects have to take care of themselves how they manage the data in the CSC environment and bring them in the beginning of, for example, fair data process or put them to the EU that, but when they are dealing, managing the data, they have to take care of uh, combining these tools which are available. And technically, the data that is uh, analyzed at CSC and is preserved at CSC can be nearly anything, but there are exceptions like the sensitive, sensitive data where we want to focus the analysis of the e site because that's the only region, only service at CSC where we can be sure enough that it is secure for uh, sensitive data. So I'm, I, have, I have now divided the basic services we are having to two different types. They are places for active data processing. So when you're actually working with your data and modifying the files all the time. So we have the CSE computing environment, but it was, that has been already presented for you. There you can have temporary up to five terabytes of storage space in your personal use and you have a small kind of permanent home directory. Actually, this is the only place at CSE which is backed. For this, you can get an older version if, if needed, but it's only 50 gigabytes in size. Uh, and it's uh, accessible only for a single user. If there's a computing project using this computing environment and you want to share files and constantly use same files with your computing, with your colleagues belonging to the same project, you can set up a so-called project directory where you can have some terabytes of the space which is visible to the computing environment of CSC and all the project members can access the same data in these disk areas. Uh, and, but you have to apply this and have a kind of explanation why you want to do this. 
This is also used in the cases where you have a good reason that five terabytes for temporary storage is not enough for your research. For example, your raw input data sets are just too much you, and you need to have them all available in the very, very same time, then you will get the project directory with, where you have a bigger uh, disk quota available for you. Uh, we have an old databases service also available, but I will quite a lot skip off this because nowadays, if you want to use relational databases in the CSC computing environment, it may be easier to set up your own uh, database server in the cloud in environment of CSC and use that in combination with the computing environment. And this uh, kind of uh, working areas in the computing in environment have a counterparts in the cloud environment and they are the volumes. So uh, both in the CPOTA and EPOTA, they have these uh, volume, volumes available, which are kind of virtual hard drives which you, which you stick into your uh, virtual machines and where we, 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 what is the way how you extend the storage capacity of your virtual machine and also preserve the data when your virtual machine is closed. So when you if you have a computing system in CPOTA or EPOTA uh, and you have the data in the uh, volume which is linked to a virtual machine and you do something with the virtual machine, when you close the virtual machine, you, the, the volume still exists and you can launch another virtual machine and plug the same data to this other machine. The problem here is that this volume can be attached to one virtual machine only at the time. So it's not a kind of data sharing facility. The photo object storage is more for the sharing, but it is not, uh, again, this kind of active management, ac active data analysis platform, but it is a place where you can store your data. So, uh, <coughs> and in ePOTA, this is also available, and ePOTA is, uh, does not have the connection to the POTA object storage. So actually for storing uh, sensitive data using the default services of CSC, this is the only place uh, uh, volume, volumes in, in ePOTA is the only place where you can store the sensitive data. And that, that, that not, that's not actually designed for long-term data storage. But that's the only platform at the moment, which is already in production, which you can use if you want to store uh, sensitive data at CSC services. You can get up to some terabytes of this, this space. But of course, then if you have special projects, then we have another solutions. But for those customers who just come in as normal customers without no, co with no contract or maybe just the possibility to use the ePOTA. This is the only place to put sensitive data at CSC. Then you have this kind of uh, more stable data areas for data storage and distribution. This has been also, also discussed. HPC Archive has been the old, uh, is the old archiving system of CSC computing platforms. It has been in use for tens of years and I think it's now kind of uh, going to be replaced with the object storage system. So this is something which will be remote, which will be less important at least in the future. And probably we don't automatically copy this data to the next generation uh, cluster environment. I'm not sure about that, but I wouldn't, I, I would, my guess would be that this data, the customers need to take care of this data, uh, the data in this service while we are moving to the new servers because we are not going to, this, this is not this will not this will not be as important tool anymore in the future because we have other services replacing this then we have the EDA storage service which was just told so this st service can be applied using the CSC user account if you and getting a project from your university and you can then map this also to the CSC computing environment as well as to your local environment you can upload files to EDA directly from Taito or Zipota if needed same thing with P2Share uh, the thing with P2Share is that you have quite small limited capacity here. And then we have the POTA object storage, which is kind of emerging thing. It's already in use in the uh, CPOTA cloud environment, but it can be actually accessed already from the cloud computing, from the computing environment. From Titan, you can directly read and write data to this service. And in the difference between, for example, HPC archive and this object storage is that HPC archive is integral, integral part of the CSC computing environment. You can access this HPC archive only through the CSC computing environment. You have to first log in or tunnel your connection, connection through SISU or TITO, and then you can access the data. While the POTA object storage is visible also to CPOTA, but also to any place in the internet, actually. You can use this uh, uh, S3 or Swift clients as in, in the similar way from your local laptop as from the TITO, and do the same data manipulation to this service 
whether you are in the entire CISU or in your local computer or in, in a virtual machine running in Seaport. So and this uh, object storage like usage will be more important uh, in the next generation of our computing environment. The data management probably will be in large part, will be based on this. So that the idea is that those data, which is not actively used, which is now at the moment staying somewhere in the project or work disk, is then in the future preserved in this kind of object storage like service from which you pull it to be analyzed in whether it's in, in CPOTA or the new cluster or somewhere else. So this will be more important in the future. Uh, so just an example of how this kind of research data overflow might go in the CSC computing environment. We have uh, HPC environment with some disk area and then you have maybe some CPOTA environment we have object storage and EDA available and what happens? Researcher has some data in his uh, or her own computer and maybe something somewhere in the internet. Well, you can first get, in this case, we are analyzing the data using the, say, SISU, for example. So you can pull your data directly from internet or from your own computer to work area here, create some new data sets and maybe you can also you can also do the copying through the object storage, so you will have, a, have a, actually a kind of backup copy of your initial data set here in the object storage, so you first push it from your own computer here, here and then draw, draw, draw it to the work directory. And you do some computing, have new data sets created there in, in CISU or title, you can make a backup copy to object storage. Uh, and if you need to collaborate with your colleague, you may apply for a project directory and create an, uh, do some, create some data set there and, on, and use also both object storage. And also your colleague can use the same object storage area if he or she belongs to the same project. And uh, then uh, if there's something which you cannot do in SISU and TITO, for example, uh, you need to analyze this tool which uses a relational database or web server interface, you can set up your CPO uh, tool and put some data there in a volume and that in that way extend the cap uh, that capabilities which are not uh, expand, expand to, the, uh, to use capabilities which are not available in SISU and TITO. And then finally, when you have some final data sets, you can move them away, uh, move, put them uh, available for either to IDA or to both object stories to preserve them for, your, for yourself or open them for public. And then finally, you can publish these data sets either from both object storage or EDA and clean up the stuff here in the other environment. You don't need to preserve the virtual machines or the volumes if the data is stored here. And that's that. Uh, so CSC capacity is heavily focused on size, so because that's probably one reason, reason why, don't we, we, why we don't have this backupping, because it takes so much space, and we want to keep the space to be used for the large data sets, which cannot be handled elsewhere. So, uh, but the size is only, not only the matter, the reason to use CSC environment might be also that if you, are need, if you need to frequently, pull, frequently pull, pull data sets from the internet, for example, to your local laptop, it might be faster to bring the data set from the internet to a machine, virtual machine in CPOTA instead of uh, your laptop. Uh, this is my own comparison of getting human genome about one gigabyte from EBI to my own laptop at home. It took 55 minutes and to CPOTA it was 33 seconds. So it's, uh, it, even though I wouldn't kind of need any extra capacity for computing or storage side, it might be nicer to work with, with these data sets in, in CPOTA and not in my laptop. Uh, about sensitive data, some words still. Uh, so for some projects we have provided as, uh, additional storage capacity use using Ceph or Nextcloud or NFS. But this has been on request and kind of a, with a special agreements and typically the users have to then pay for these services. Uh, there are other suitable services for other services suitable for sensitive data being developed at the moment. The secure desk, desktop and local EGI EGA, uh, EGA and local EGA connection uh, for managing uh, human genome data, but these are not yet in production and I cannot give, give you any guesses when these would be available for your customers. So thank you. Any questions?